Hello all, in this presentation, we are going to see how to approach Epidemiology of Communicable Disease chapter easily. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. Out of the total nearly 1000 pages in part textbook, 240 pages, that is 25 percentage, is comprised by Epidemiology of Communicable Disease chapter, that is the fifth chapter in part. But when it comes to the marks distribution, paper 1 contains this chapter. To the maximum, one ten marker, one five marker, one two mark can be from this chapter. Sometimes this includes program chapter also. This presentation is for the last minute preparations who struggle with remembering the communicable disease epidemiology chapter. This chapter is going to be very helpful in medicine and pediatrics and in general practice for your life. But for exams, we need to follow some shortcuts. In community medicine, there is nothing wrong. You may not be close to the truth. That's all. When you write the answer sensibly using your common sense, you will not score less than the minimum marks required. So before going to the chapter and the shortcuts which we are going to deal, let us see the essays which was asked from this chapter. So discuss the epidemiology of tetanus, discuss the list of arbovirus, JE, Japanese encephalitis, tuberculosis, human rabies, poliomyelitis, typhoid fever, hookworm infestation, lymphatic filariasis, leprosy, dengue fever, measles, malaria. So either epidemiology, clinical features and control will be commonly asked. Here add a note on program also is here. So epidemiology, control, prevention, clinical features are the commonly used terms to describe this disease. So what is apparent here is that before approaching this chapter, we should have studied this second chapter and the third chapter thoroughly. That is the concept of health and the epidemiology chapter to define these diseases perfectly. Let us see the skeleton to write the answers. Throughout the course of three and a half years of MBBS so far, many of these headings will be familiar to you about the particular disease. You need to structure and answer it correctly. So when we start off the disease, we have to write an introduction or a problem statement. The problem, it will be in world, India, then in the state which uh, you are uh, giving the exams. Then epidemiological triad that is comprised of agent, host and environment. In agent, we always talk about what is the agent, then source of the infection, then the infectivity and the secondary attack rate. That is the infective power of the disease. Then in clinical features, we talk about case fatality rate. That is the killing power of the disease. In host, we commonly talk about the age factor, immunity, vaccination status and nutrition. In environment, we commonly talk about climate, poor ventilation and overcrowding and poor socioeconomic conditions. So these are all the common attributes in all these infectious communicable diseases. Then we talk about modes of transmission and remember based on these modes of transmission only, all your diseases have been categorized. So it is respiratory, in intestinal, arthropod bone, zoonosis and surface infections. This classification is already based on the modes of the transmission. So you need not worry about, so it is based on this only that diseases are classified. So you have to be thorough with this chapters, classification, broad classification and the individual diseases also. Then after modes of transmission, we usually talk about the incubation period. Incubation period is used for the quarantine of the patients in, in pure public health. And the period of infectivity we will talk about that will help in the isolation of the patient. Then clinical features in that we need to talk about symptoms which the patient describes and the signs which uh, appear for a doctor and the stages of the illness and the complication which arise out of the disease. Then we uh, talk about prevention. Prevention is again divided into primary, secondary and tertiary. Here we don't much use this uh, primordial prevention. So out of primary we have health promotion and specific protection. So all these diseases we can uh, answer like this nutrition, lifestyle modifications, environmental modification and health education under health promotion. Under specific protection we need to talk about the vaccine and if immunoglobulin, any immunoglobulin is present or not. Under vaccine we need to talk about the root, dose, site and frequency national immunization schedule under the universal immunization program and the side effects of this vaccine complication arising out of this vaccination and chemo prophylaxis that is any drug in order to pre prevent the appearance of the disease under specific protection then secondary are the control lab diagnosis so usually for bacteria we may use this anti antigen detection test or antibody detection test the test uh, antibodies will be elisa uh, or the dna assays uh, rt pcr will be there isolation and culture and the treatment. Treatment will be a specific drug. So here in the in this presentation, in the next coming about 15 to 20 slides, what we are going to club those diseases under a common heading that is incubation period of the diseases together, treatment of the diseases together, clinical features of the diseases together, prevention of the diseases together and with the uh, agent and host environment together. So now we are going to the agent. 
small pox we all know it is caused by the variola virus chicken pox and don't worry if you don't remember the agent in exams what you can with the headings under the headings causative agent for small pox you can write it as small pox virus chicken pox virus measles virus nobody is going to object that answer but you have to be very careful you should not write it as chicken pox fungi or chicken pox bacteria but the specific answer is better small pox is caused by variola virus chicken pox by varicella zoster virus measles by rna paramyxo virus rubella or german measles caused by rna virus of toga virus family mumps it's caused by uh, rubella virus of paramyxo viridae myxo virus parotiditis influenza is caused by influenza virus a b c d from ortho myxo viridae family there will be no cross immunity between this a b c d in a and b will cause epidemic a is responsible for the shift and drift causing pandemics diphtheria pertussis is it should be here in whooping cough this other is called as pertussis diphtheria which is caused by carinibacterium diphtheriae whooping cough is caused by bordetella pertussis meningococcal meningitis is caused by neisseria neisseria meningitis with 12 sub serotypes acute respiratory infections it is classified into various viruses bacteria and others so like acute respiratory infection acute diarrheal disease also will be classified like that and in the next slide sexually transmitted diseases also classified like this and to an extent food poisoning is also classified like this so sars which is caused by a new strain of corona virus tuberculosis is caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis polio myelitis it is an rna virus 1 2 3 types so we all know 1 2 3 opv i said so one uh, stands for o that is it's responsible for outbreaks 2 p that is stands for potent uh, strain or the potent subtype 3 that is the it is b that is associated with vaccine associated polio viral hepatitis a which is a pico rna virus e b c and d a and e are food food born and that is uh, pico oral route transmission b c d has common sexual and uh, blood born infections Ne- uh, neural system central nervous system this affects the hepatic system mainly that is liver so cholera is caused by vibrio cholerae classical or eltar and uh, 0139 typhoid by uh, fever which is caused by salmonella typhi o hva salmonella typhi a and b salmonella typhi and salmonella para typhi commonly when it occurs it's called as enteric fever food poisoning is caused by bacteria such as salmonella typhi murium cholera suis enteritis for salmonellosis staphylococcus botulinis botulism clostridium perfringens bacillus cereus it may be due to a bacteria it may be due to a toxin it may be due to a chemical it may be due to a poison amebiasis is caused by entamoeba histolytica ascariasis is caused by roundworm ascar- ascaris lumbricoides hookworm infection is caused by nicator americanus or the american hookworm ankylostoma duodenum male and female is nearly 1 cm in length then we have whipworm also that is trichuris and trichura under the soil transmitted helminths so under soil transmitted helminths we have ascariasis hookworm infections and whipworm infection dragonculiasis which is the caused by the dragonculus medinensis arthropod bond diseases the causative agent dengue syndrome it is caused by dengue arbovirus family four under four serotypes we have we you know 1 2 3 and 4 when two is combined with other serotypes the hemorrhagic incidence of hemorrhagic fever and hemorrhagic fever with shock will be more So malaria is caused by Plasmodium vivax, Falciparum, Ovale and malaria. Lymphatic filariasis, Ucheriria bancrofti, Bruga malai. Zika virus disease, Zika virus of Flavi virus. As I told earlier, wherever you don't uh, remember the name, you can uh, use this Zika virus as uh, Zika virus disease, Zika virus like this. Zoonosis caused, that is viral or rabies, which is caused by Elisa virus type 1. Yellow fever, Flavi virus, Fibricus, it's an arbovirus type, close similarity to the dengu virus nipa virus infection paramyxo viridae eripa virus japanese encephalitis flavi virus group b arbovirus kfd flavi virus arbovirus group chikungunya fever group a virus brucellosis brucella melitonensis abortus suis and canis leptospirosis leptospira introgens plague escenia pestis human salmonellosis salmonella typhi para typhi anc tiniasis tinea solium tinea saginatum Tinea solium is otherwise called as pork tapeworm. Tinea saginatum is the beef tapeworm. How not to confuse this is there is solium as O after second letter. After second letter is the O which is followed by P. So that is pork uh, tapeworm. Here S A. This is uh, saginatum A. After A B is there. So beef tapeworm here for tinea saginatum. 
Hydratid disease, equinococcus granulosus and multilocularis, leishmaniasis, leishmania donovani for visceral leishmaniasis, tropica for cutaneous leishmaniasis, brasiliensis for mucocutaneous leishmaniasis, zoonosis is again classified into epidemic or louse bone typhus, rocky mountain spotted fever, rickett seal pox and trench fever. We have in the scrub typhus group, scrub typhus which is caused by rickett seal shushumagishi, murine or flea bone endemic, or endemic typhus which is caused by rickett seal typhi, tick typhus rickett seal konare, Q fever it is caused by uh, coxilla burniti, trachoma, chlamydia, trachomatis, ABC, tetanus is caused by clostridium tetani, leprosy, mycobacterium leprae, Steady, the gonorrhea, syphilis, and chancroid, etc. Like we have a group of virus, bacteria, fungi, etc. Yas, uh, trypanosoma, pertinue, uh, AIDS, uh, human immunodeficiency virus. Now we are moving to the source of the infection. As the respiratory diseases, most of the times it will be droplet nuclei from the oropharyngeal secretions and the lesions of the mucosa. So it will be like this. There are few exceptions here. Um, influenza, when you talk about the source is going to be droplet, but you need to talk about in animals and birds are the reservoirs. There are clinical and subclinical cases present in uh, influenza, mums, but in uh, but not in measles and rubella. But when it comes to measles and rubella, there may not be any iceberg phenomenon, typical iceberg phenomenon, because as there is no carrier. But here in mums and measles, uh, influenza, we have subclinical case. And in influenza, you have to add about the animals and birds uh, reservoirs. Diphtheria, we have the carrier state. Carrier state is more common in diphtheria. We need to mention that. So again, moving off is same. Meningo 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 meningitis is one CNS manifestation which is transmitted by respiratory route. And acute respiratory infections are uh, transmitted by the droplet infections. SARS direct and indirect contact also. But tuberculosis, human and bovine sources will be transmitted by the smutum and infected milk respectively. For intestinal disease, we have poliomyelitis, only a human case. Here, the case to the subclinical case is 1 is to 1000. Feces and oropharyngeal secretions also transmits the disease. Viral hepatitis A and E are transmitted by fecal oral route. B, C, D are transmitted by blood sexual perinatal or parenteral route. B, hepatitis B is present only in humans, case or carrier. Acute uh, diarrheal disease, man is the principal reservoir, fecal oral route of transmission. Cholera, human case or a temporary carrier that is during the convalescent phase of the disease. Typhoid fever, human case or car carrier. When we hear about carrier of uh, typhoid fever, we can write about the typhoid Mary who was chronically spreading the disease. Food poisoning, Salmonella, animals are the reservoirs. Staphylococcus, man and animals. Botulism, home preserved foods. And Clostridium, animals are the sources. Amoebiasis, cysts in the stools. Troposite or vegetative forms in intestine. Man is the only reservoir. Ascariasis, worms in the intestine, worms will be present in the intestine, eggs will be excreted in the stool, about 2,40,000 eggs per day, man is the only reservoir, 6 months to 1 year life will be present for this worms. Hookworm infection, there will be, uh, in contrast to the ascariasis, it lays 2,40,000 eggs, here it is uh, laying 10 to 30,000 eggs per day, ankylosomatoidinal. For Nicator Americanus, it lays about 5 to 10,000 uh, eggs. Man is the only reservoir, like uh, Ascariasis, Hukong. Man is the only reservoir. But in Dragonculiasis, drinking water uh, contaminated by the Cyclops. This is for the Dragonculiasis. Ascariasis and Hukong is like this. But in uh, Echinococcus granulosis, man is an accidental host. That is hydrated disease. Man is an accidental host. It is the, actually a dog sheep uh, cycle. So, arthropod bone diseases, dengue virus is transmitted by most commonly by female Aedes mosquito, malaria by female Anopheles mosquito bite, lymphatic filariasis by Culex, Zika virus by Aedes. And we have source of infection for uh, rabies, saliva of infected animals, either bite or scratch. Lick in the intact skin is not there, but lick in uh, mucous membrane is uh, at risk. Yellow fever, infected female mosquito bite, the reservoir is monkey. Nipah virus is with the direct contact with the bats, pigs and humans also. Reservoir is the fruit bat which is uh, present in palm trees. Japanese encephalitis, sorry here the, there is a mistake, it is uh, Culex mosquitoes. Uh, pig, ampli, pig act as an amplifiers. no man to man transmission is present. KFT is through the infected tick bite. Rat and school wills act as a reservoir. Monkeys act as an amplifiers. Chikungunya fever is also transmitted through infected Aedes mosquito bite. So again, uh, brucellosis, it is through the secretions from the 
contact uh, the, uh, the two again contact food born and air born from the infected animals leptospirosis is direct contact through the mucous membranes urine of the infected rodents plague infected rodents fleas and case of pneumonia pneumonic plague will transmit the disease human salmonellosis infected animals and humans tinnitus is the cyst injection of the cyst directly from the meat or x from the feces through fecal oral transmission transmits the disease hydatid disease x from the feces it is actually a dog sheep cycle leishmaniasis it's a bite of the sand fly for rickettsia zoonosis streptophyus trombicloid mite is the reservoir murine typhus rat is a reservoir uh, rat flea transmits the disease tick typhus tick bite is the cause q fever tick reservoirs direct entry surface infections source of infection trachoma ocular discharges of infected uh, persons tetanus the source of injury is the injuries from the spores from the environment as the spores is present everywhere in this earth this is the one disease which is practically not possible to eradicate from this world leprosy droplet nuclei from the nose and close contact even though it is uh, transmitted mainly by droplet nuclei from the nose it is listed under surface infection std says the name indicates it is sexually transmitted disease sexual transmission yas direct contact homeis vector aids sexual blood parental respiratory diseases period of infectivity for chicken, uh, chicken pox 1 to 2 days before the rash to 4 to 5 days thereafter measles 4 days before and after the rash rubella week before the symptoms to the week after the rash mumps it is 4 to 6 days before the symptoms to week thereafter influenza 1 to 2 days before and after the onset of the symptoms diphtheria 4 to 28 days from onset of the disease Oofing of a week after the exposure to the three weeks after the paroxysmal stage, meningococcal meningitis. After 24 hours of specific treatment, the patient will become non-infective. ARI and SSRs have different uh, tuberculosis. 90% of the patients will become non-infective in 24 hours of ATT. Polio meningitis, seven to ten days before symptom appears and lasts for two to three weeks. Viral hepatitis. For hepatitis A, during the it is two weeks before the appearance of the jaundice and one week after the appearance of the jaundice. Hepatitis B incubation period from incub during the incubation period to the disappearance of antigen in the blood. Acute viral diseases period of infectivity will be the seven days around the symptoms. These are all not mentioned in the part. Amoebiasis as long as the six uh, cysts are excreted. Ascariasis still the females are there. Eggs will be laid daily, and who comes also same till the females are there. so the, these diseases period, period of infectivity is not listed so for only for yellow fever it is the first 3 to 4 days of illness they are infective but for uh, quarantine purpose it will be 10 days in the airport so when it comes to the secondary attack rate chicken pox uh, it is given by uh, given as 90 percentage mumps it is given as 86 percentage whooping cough it is given by 90 percentage rest all secondary attack rate is not mentioned for host factors when it comes to host factors as i mentioned earlier age Uh, immunity nutrition will be the common factors present so when it comes to age there are certain diseases which is more in adults which are more in children also so immune, when you when it comes to immunocompromised or the immune status you can write about the vaccine status previous infection that is very important then immunocompromised may be due to hiv aids pregnancy steroids organ transplant recipients diabetes mellitus malnutrition malignancy and therapeutic radiation so all these things can be Uh, coming under immunity of the person one attack in uh, chicken pox will give permanent immunity pregnancy it is going to cause not as severe as rubella but uh, some amount of uh, fetal fetal deformities will be present for measles it is uh, the host factor 6 months to 3 years is the most common age group getting affected nutrition is the most important factor malnutrition is most important factor mumps it is most commonly affected rubella it is most commonly affected between 3 to 10 years mumps it is 5 to 9 years influenza age and sex are equal mortality is more in the child and elderly both both extremes of age the mortality is higher diphtheria it is commonly affected between 1 to 5 whooping cough it is age below 5 immunity vaccination and attack uh, attack will give a permanent immunity meningococcal meningitis is always severe in children acute respiratory infection severe and high rates in infants and children sars age is an important factor CKD presence of CKD and diabetes mellitus will cause increased mortality tuberculosis adult males are more commonly affected nutrition plays an important role in recovery of the disease immunity vaccination and cell mediated immunity are more important in the pathogenesis of tuberculosis polio mellitus male children are more commonly affected viral hepatitis A uh, is will be more common among adults B age uh, that is uh, the reproductive age group high risk and immunity acute viral diseases more common among 6 to 2 years because of crawling 
and various other factors. Malnutrition, immunity is also associated with the morbidity and mortality of the disease. So, in, uh, increase uh, in uh, child, increased when there is less acidity. So, if they are on treatment for peptic ulcer, the higher chance of cholera will be present. The low socioeconomic status, immunity also is a factor. Typhoid will be more common, common among 4 to 19 years of age, male gender and uh, immunity also plays an important role in typhoid fever. For amoebiasis will be more common in children. Hookworm infections will be more common in 15 to 25 years. Dengue syndrome is more common among children, adult. For uh, rabies, the host factors will be, it will be more common among 1 to 24 years and the dog handlers, uh, veterinarians and uh, who work in close contact with the dogs. Here KFD will be 20 to 40 years, male again who work uh, near to the forest. Soon is again adult males and occupations who engaged, engage themselves in close proximity with the animals. Plague, movement and activity is a major role in pathogenesis of the disease. Leishmaniasis, males are more affected, low socioeconomic status, occupations, certain occupations, immunity or plays an important role in leishmaniasis. Trachoma, it is uh, children get uh, children used to get affected more. Females also used to get affected more uh, when it comes to adult adults also. Tetanus, 5 to 40 will be most commonly affected. Agricultural workers, immunity and the professions which uh, lead to more wound. So, leprosy, cell mediated immunity plays an important role among the host factors. Sexually transmitted disease, reproductive age group, low socioeconomic status are more, are more commonly affected. AIDS, high risk groups are the most common group getting affected. Now moving to the environmental factors, here there is no hard fast uh, environmental factors. What you can understand here is whenever uh, winter season, this respiratory diseases will be more. So winter season, respiratory diseases will be more. Uh, summer, after the summer rainy season, this intestinal diseases will be more. You need not remember all these uh, seasons, but you, what you can do for environmental factors is the poor socioeconomic conditions, overcrowding. Uh, that can be an important role for respiratory diseases. That can be an important role for respiratory diseases. When it comes to environmental factors of uh, intestinal diseases, you can write about poor sanitation, open air defecation, other the practices, cultural practices for uh, hand hygiene and personal hygiene. So arthropod uh, bond diseases, as we all know, the mosquitoes love hot and humid temperature and rain for um, the mosquito breeding. So for lymphatic filariasis, the Vector is uh, Qlex, so drainage and town planning will prevent the disease. So again, in environmental factor, rabies, water for water uh, forms a natural boundary. Yellow fever is restricted to 45 countries of uh, Africa and Latin America. Greater than 24 degrees centigrade uh, favors uh, transmission. Plague uh, will be more in September to May. Brucellosis will be more among overcrowding, over sanitation and hygiene. Leishmaniasis is a disease of the plains and climatic changes favors this uh, leishmaniasis to appear more. Trachoma is uh, presence of uh, flies, quality of life and kajal application. Uh, uh, these are all the cultural factors influences this uh, environmental factors. So now incubation period. This definitely we need to compare and study. Uh, acute respiratory infection, it always varies. So how we can categorize here is most of the diseases will be 2 to 3 weeks. This is almost 2 to 3 weeks. This is almost two weeks. This is almost two to three weeks. Two to three weeks. This is also three to six weeks. This is three to six weeks. So two to three weeks, two to three weeks, two to three weeks. Chicken box, measles, rubella, mumps are two to three weeks. So almost smallpox is also 12 days. That is also almost two to three weeks. So influenza is the shortest one. So 18 to 72 hours. Diphtheria is less than a week. Diphtheria is less than a week. Woofing cough is 1 to 2 weeks. Meningococcal also 3 to 4 days. So you can keep this diphtheria and meningococcal in less than 1 week. Woofing cough in 1 to 2 weeks. Rest all will be 2 to 3 weeks. Influenza will be in hours and SARS. So you can keep diphtheria, meningococcal meningitis, SARS within, a, uh, within less than a week. So the other diseases like chickenpox, measles, rubella, mumps, in two to three weeks and influenza in hours. Tuberculosis will be three to six weeks. In, uh, polio, it will be one one to two weeks. Viral hepatitis, it is two to four weeks. Hepatitis B, it is one to six months. C, it is two weeks to six months. E, it is three to eight weeks. Cholera, it is few hours. Like your influenza in respiratory disease, cholera in intestinal disease is very short, but it can take up to five days also. Typhoid fever is 10 to 14 days. Salmonella fever, food poisoning. Salmonellosis, that is, it will be all will be in hours. So, out of which 
botulism is little longest one uh, almost 18 to 36 hours followed by salmonellosis 12 to 24 hours followed by botulism 6 to 24 hours followed by staphylococcus which is 1 to 8 hours amebiasis which is 2 to 4 weeks ascariasis it is 18 days to several weeks for dengue it will be less than a week for malaria it is 2 to 3 weeks lymphatic filariasis it is 8 to 16 months zika virus is also less than a week rabies it is 1 to 3 months but most commonly the shortest is a 7 days to many years but we, we look at this 7 days in order to create the active immunization through the vaccination yellow fever 3 to 6 days nipah virus 4 to 14 days japanese and severity 5 to 15 days kfd 3 to 8 days chikungunya fever 4 to 8 days brucellosis 1 to 3 weeks leptospirosis usually 10 days bubonic septicemic pneumonic so bubonic uh, and septicemic will be 2 to 7 days, pneumonia will be 1 to 3 days. Human salmonellosis will be 6 to 12, 6 to 72 hours. Teeniasis it is 6 to 14 hours, 14 weeks. Hydratid it is variable. Leishmaniasis it is 1 to 4 months. Rickard's illness, among Rickard's illness zoonosis, scrub typhus is 10 to 4, 12 days. Murine typhus is 1 to 2 days. Tick typhus is 3 to 7 days. Q fever is 2 to 3 days. Trachoma it is 5 to 12 days. Tetanus is 6 to 10 days. Leprosy it is 3 to 5 years. Yas it is 9 to 90 days. Aids it is few months to 10 years.